This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. Just a quick intro to this. I did go to C2E2 once again this year, and I went to the Star Wars Rebels 10th anniversary panel. This is just some of the best footage I got from it. I didn't record everything, I just recorded everything that I found interesting. Everyone here, in order from where they're seated, is Tira Circa, who plays to be in Ren, Freddy Pence Jr., who plays Kanan Jarrus, or Caleb Doom. Then we have Vanessa Marshall, who plays Harrison Dula, followed by Steve Blum, who plays Gareth Zebarellius, or Zeb. And finally, Lars Mikkelsen, who plays Grand Admiral Mithrani Roto, or Thrawn. And for this, there's a few of them where I didn't get the full question, so before those, I will put about what they said for that, so you can understand the question being asked in its full context, which you'll see immediately with the first clip I have uploaded. I will also have everything broken down in sections, which you'll be able to see in both the description and hopefully it shows up in the video. Since he knew the whole time, and I believe it. So I sorted it. You could tell when you read it. They just named it something else, but you could, you could tell. What were you wielding? A sun sword? A sun sword. Come on. Oh, <laughs> I could be anything. It's either, it's either Thundar the Barbarian or it's Star Wars. <laughs> so yeah, I figured, I figured it out pretty quick. Pretty quick. Freddy, Freddy figured it out. Also, Sun Sword, I feel like maybe I could have figured it out. But my, I did not have any idea. My, I forget what my character's name was, but it wasn't Sabine, of course. And as many of you probably know, our, our show was called Wolf. Go figure. Yes. And uh, yeah, I had these cool, cool scenes that I read, and I didn't know what it was. So I didn't know until I got the phone call from Dave to say, you've been hired for the show, and by the way, it's Star Wars. <laughs> it's a pretty great call to get. <laughs> yeah, I, it didn't really sink in for me until I was at a convention in the UK for Transformers. And I got a phone call from my agent saying, you need to go to the studio out in the country somewhere, somebody's house, and you just booked something. And she didn't want to tell me what it was. And I show up at this person's house, and I go upstairs in this little sweaty booth. And they put the, the sides in front of me, and I'm looking at the script and it says stormtroopers like Storm This is Storm <laughs> And I'm, I'm having this little fit, this little internal fit, and Dave is on the other end of the zoom going, Yeah Steve, it's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we told you at Disney when you came for the callbacks, I guess it didn't register. <laughs> Well, I saw elements of Star Wars in the audition, but I always see elements of Star Wars in everything. Like, whoever I'm in front of in line in the supermarket, I'm like, he has elements of Thrawn. <laughs> but I saw the Sun Sword, so I was like, oh, I know how to play this. I'll just be specific with Star Wars stuff, and, you know, they'll, they'll respect my audition, even though it's for wolves. Uh, I think Taylor, Taylor thought he was auditioning for Mowgli in the Jungle Book. <laughs> But I just never thought that my life would come so close to the space opera. So I, I was like, there's no way this is Star Wars. I did not put it together until I walked into the callback and saw the Twi'lek on the wall, and then Dave. And it was like, okay, just act cool. <laughs> so I, I got a mild panic attack, but luckily it all worked out. <laughs> did Dave, hold on one second. Did Dave wear that stupid cowboy hat indoors when you read? He did, right? He wears it indoors. That's so not cowboy, but... <laughs> but he had Laku hanging out of it, so... He's from Pittsburgh. What do you want from him? <laughs> I mean, no shade to Pittsburgh, but you know, cowboy's Pittsburgh. The Lucky jersey and the hat look good together, though. <laughs> Davis made that a thing. And then Lars, because you joined the cast in the later seasons, Yep. Did you know it was Rebels, and specifically, did you know it was your character? Because your character's kind of a big deal. It was. 
I didn't really gather you know, until we were into the first session. I think you know, I just got the call and you know, I think it was a bit of a tryout you know, that we said, could this work? And then within 10 minutes, you know, we just hit it off and uh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> It was fun. I mean, it was fun doing it. I mean, we, I, we did it on Skype. They be on Skype, and uh, I do the session in Copenhagen. And uh, yeah, what we did? What did I do? Four, five seasons, I think. Did we? Yeah. We did four seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I was going to say, if you and my brother was already a part of the, the Star Wars universe, so. Yeah. It was nice to get something on you. You know, some of your characters have now shown up in other projects. Did Dave Filoni, when Rebels, the animated series, ended, give you any indication where your characters might go? Any hints? Now, in the last session, <laughs> Dave thinks he works for the CIA. There's no <laughs> whatsoever. There's no cracking him? There's no information. It's not about cracking him. No, no information given. Nothing. Well, so then, if there was no information for you, it was all speculation, all ideas of like what your characters might be up to. It, at the time, what would you have liked to see your characters? Sorry, Kaden. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they can come back. There can be like a Jon Snow situation. <laughs> but I, I mean, what would you have at that point love to see the next step for your characters? Steven. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna hang for this. <laughs> I would like to see Zevin Callis as well. Yeah! <laughs> I would love to see Sabine, just more Sabine, like in any capacity, whether it's live action or animation or whatever it is, more Sabine. I love her so much and, you know, I, I'm glad that she continues on. Well, I think we got an answer on Thrawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the way it goes from here, I don't know. It's like it's what you say. It's like I'm, I'm, I'd be shot if I have anything on that. You know, I can't, can't uh, you know, divulge anything. So, uh, but I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really like the scene where, you know, that's sort of very sort of descriptive of his character, where he sort of uh, delves into, to know an enemy, you uh, to, to defeat an enemy, you must know them. You know, about you know, the hero symbol and the whole, you know, the whole history of your enemy and all that. That was very sort of descriptive for me as to who he was you know, as, a, as a character. I really like doing that scene. I have one which is regarding uh, Mine is what Freddie already mentioned, which is Trials of the Dark Saber. Yeah. I feel like it was such a gift. It felt like such a gift to me because it was super challenging, especially as a, a primarily on camera actor. You know, Rebels was my first like real deal uh, voiceover acting uh, opportunity, and so. I was playing, you know, I played a character who does not allow herself to get emotional except for like rage and anger. <laughs> um, so she doesn't allow herself to be vulnerable, and that was about the most vulnerable a character could get. In, um, but also like there was physicality to it, and so uh, like Freddie just mentioned, Dave sort of sent everyone away, sent everyone home for the day, kept one sound engineer, he stayed, and it was just Freddie and myself, and. I thought that was really a gift too because it allowed us to really just 
be free and, and go to places that I hadn't gotten to go as Sabine Wren before. And, um, you know, I, I really love that episode so much. <laughs> I didn't know it was called Trials of the Dark Saber until you just said that. <laughs> I've never read a title page for any movie I've done, for any, I don't care what the name of it is, I just want to get into it, and I never knew it was called that, so it's awesome. Usually I don't like the names, so that's why I don't like it. That was a pretty good one, yeah. I don't know the name of my favorite episodes either, but uh, there, were th there were three moments that I specifically remember. One was when Seb stole the TIE Fighter and was driving with speed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that question got answered in the series because Kanan and Hera made a baby. <laughs> 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 okay, well, I can't follow that, but I think would be um, making art. She'd go find a quiet place and paint. <laughs> and she would be listening to ACDC. <laughs> what is everyone getting each other?
thing. A glass of midichlorians? <laughs> I think Sabine is getting Zeb antiperspirant. <laughs> what are you saying? Is there a back to ship on the, or uh, tank on the ship, on the spaceship? Yeah. I don't think we have one. Then we'll get you one of those. Let's get one of those. Let's get one of those. All right. All those boo boos. Well, I think Thrawn might give you all incarceration. <laughs> <laughs> In the past 10 years, how has your life changed because of being part of the Star Wars universe? You're never alone in baggage claim. Uh, <laughs> as we heard. Yeah, I mean, on and on. Oh, I was going to say monumentally because, first of all, when you start acting, when you start your acting career in Hollywood, I don't think anyone foreshadows that one day they'll be part of the Star Wars universe. That's just not something that feels like real life. And so I, I think, for one, getting to like have formed this bond with these people, and it doesn't even feel like 10 years, 11 years really, because we started a year before the show ever premiered, but to get to have that, and also to get to be part of this family that's like, like you said, just anywhere on the planet you, you find each other and so it, it like personally and professionally it's just been like incredibly gratifying and I still sometimes pinch myself and go like how did I get so lucky yeah it was, it was a trip I, I would say more personally than than professionally because I'm still in contact with everybody here including Taylor who's not here I talk to Taylor all the time um, and that doesn't happen a lot Kat Kathleen Turner famously said, a, a movie is like a marriage with a guaranteed divorce. Um, you're with each other so much, and you love each other so much, and then you never see one another again, and that just wasn't the case with this. Um, and maybe because the TV is so different, and we were together for four years. Um, but yeah, the, the, the personal relationships that have been made, I mean, I'm trying to be a neighbor of Steve's here in the next few years. You know, wait. So we're, yeah, we're, we're definitely close, and we have love for each other. Even if we don't see each other all the time, there's still communication and uh, a lot of love and respect. I would say that's the most, the most. Uh, much more shallow. I, I get lots of patches, so. <laughs> <laughs> I save every one of them, but the groups, the, the 501st Rebel Legion Mando Mercs, they're amazing, and it's global. Everywhere we go in the world, we, like you guys are saying, we feel like we're family, and they always greet us warmly. They bring a droid by to say hello. <laughs> they present us patches and coins in airports and everywhere. It's, it's just amazing. I, I've never felt part of something to this degree. I like to get them to arrest us at the end of panels. <laughs> <laughs> I did that in San Francisco, but I forgot to tell Taylor. <laughs> 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 I was like, just roll with it, just roll with it. <laughs> Should we be worried? <laughs> no, I, I couldn't find them this time. Sorry, guys. I, I'll, I'm going to go find them later. Lars, you can arrest us and take us off. I'll do that. <laughs> Very good. No, for me, it's been life changing, too. I mean, it also, it's become part of this family and uh, uh, now working on, on a sort of uh, real, real life. And I pinch myself there. Uh, first day on set with a, a drone, you know, I asked it out, didn't want to go. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just amazing, it's, it's been amazing being a part of this, and, uh, the, the, the embrace <coughs> of all of you. And, uh, and also, I mean, in Denmark at least, we've got a charity organization called the Trippers for Charity, which I've become an ambassador for. And, that also is life changing because it changes the lives of so many young people. Uh, one of our fan questions is Is there a particular day that was your favorite being on this show? Like it was just the whole day, things just came together, and it just stands out in your memory. What about Jason Isaacs? 
playing golf. When he golf. came in and put the miniature, miniature golf together, you were going to murder that dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you seemed so irate that it was like First so off, professional. let's not throw Jason under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I know him. I'm, it Jason's just, a good dude. I, he's I'm not his, throwing him under the bus. He spent his, his time between takes playing miniature golf. <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, whatever. <laughs> also, we should but he was lovely, he was lovely. Lovely. But also, okay. we had been recording for a year or more in the same studio once a week, and we had no idea that there was a miniature golf set in like a closet, and he shows up day one of his, you know, of him working on the show, and he like, wanders over, opens it up, takes it out, starts playing, you're like, where did this thing come from? <laughs> I, I think the Inquisitor successfully annoyed Kanan with that thought. In the moment, either that or your, your acting was flawless. <laughs> you know, this is so long ago, I don't remember being mad. I really don't. I, it, I, I don't, maybe I was just trying to stay in character. You remember this better than me, but I don't remember being mad because I remember talking to him after the episode and we had a cool conversation. So. That, that's the only I don't Yeah, no, he's a completely cool dude, but it, it was kind of like, I'm space mom, you're space dad, and like, Uncle Bob is just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know if Uncle Bob's going to get drunk again, and you guys are going to go at it, and it just, it was, it was, it was an interesting day. <laughs> I remember one day I was in the booth working, and I'm looking out into the hallway, and there's a glass door, and this, the wall in the hallway has this beautiful, uh, tropical sort of, and, and I see Tia, like this, on the wall, because her exactly. outfit matched the wall exactly. She was, picture somewhere. I have it, I'll post it later, check my feed, you have to see this. It was like Predator, I was looking at this wall, and this beautiful face comes out of it, oh my god. When I tell you that this jacket that I have was literally the exact print of the wallpaper, I don't know what that says about my fashion sense. <laughs> the most for me, aside from our, our trials in the dark it was called, um, <laughs> um, was our last episode that we ever recorded, which I, I, some of you may have heard this story before, but uh, I, Sabine, um, you know, records the epilogue of the show, and um, I did not know that that was gonna happen until Dave pulled me aside and told me, and again, he said, we, we, we had our last episode, it was very emotional, we were doing a big casting crew dinner that night, and so he dismissed everyone, everyone, we said, you know, hugged it out, although we were going to see each other at dinner, and he kept me, and he sent everyone away, except for, again, one sound engineer, and he gives me this piece of, it's a handwritten note, like, note on a piece of paper, crumpled up, that he takes out of his pocket, because he didn't want to type it lest anyone actually like accidentally get access to it and it was the epilogue and he said, here read this you're gonna do this and so i read it and immediately burst into tears because like what I, and then i'm like oh my god i'm gonna have to keep this secret from vanessa she's gonna kill me and so we do it it was very emotional it was really special and then i have to go to dinner with all of these people and be like yeah it was my no, you were 100% traumatized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so terrified that I was going to like let something slip, but I I stayed on that trust tree like my life depended on it because I feel like it. and we have like a Sabine cake too, to, like black frosting, and I remember everyone's teeth. We were all on her. Like, you have an teeth. incredible memory. Of this. <laughs> Anything food related, of course. <laughs> That tinder no, you didn't. It was kind of, I thought she was just sad it was over. I was sad it was over, and I was also like really emotional about what I actually just had to record, and yet had to keep that secret for a full year. A full year. Oh, that's like a weight lifted off. And it involves the idea of a prequel series. 
Now, I almost kind of think that I would personally like to see a little backstory, like more backstories uh, of everyone, but um, if we were to go with the first, like if there was one character who went first, giving us more like a prequel series, more background, uh, more backstory, who do you think you would want to see first? Anyone but Chopper. He's <laughs> <laughs> a criminal, come on. <laughs> Kanan, right? Kanan? Yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> Comic books sort of already did that. I mean, I guess they could replicate. I don't know. I don't know if it would be as exciting. The comic did a really good job, I felt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is brilliant because I, I, I like nine really bad ideas for, 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 for the tenth good. You know? So, but that's one of his forces, I think. You know, they, they sort of utilize what, you, what you're there with, you know, your talents. You know? So, yeah, a bit like Thorn. Yeah. Uh, lack of personal hygiene. That was nicely incorporated, so I. I <laughs> method, very method. <laughs> incorporated a, a lot of each of our personalities into the characters. I, I think early on he sort of, you know, he, he talked to us a lot, a lot, as you've heard. <laughs> like, there was lots of one-on-one -on -one and group discussions, and I think he took, I mean, I, I feel like each of, I mean, you're, you're so Canaan, really, like, in a lot of ways. But you're alive, so that's great. That's great. <laughs> And our writers, like we got to know each other so well, and so, as especially as time went on and the seasons progressed, like our characters really do. I think they did a really amazing job of incorporating even like facial. They they would record us. Uh, they would film us our, our sessions. Each of us had a camera at our station um, at our microphones, so they would like incorporate really nuanced facial expressions and reactions into our characters. So I think there's a lot of a lot of similarities. Yeah, Lars mentioned earlier that so much is on the page, um, and you really sort of trust in that. But as far as bringing extra stuff, I mean, with Kanan, the only challenge and the, the tricky thing, which was fun as an actor, was to bring the trauma that he suffered with him for four years. And, and what does trauma do to a personality? How does it shape a personality? It creates trust issues, it creates authority issues, which he most certainly has, trust issue, issues, which he most certainly had. Um, so I'm trying to carry those things and be conscious of those things on top of what was on the page was, was the biggest thing for me as far as carrying trauma, because that's not fun to do. It's because you, you stick with it a little bit when the job's over, but it was, it was really important. It's what humbled Kanan. Um, I think that's why people like Kanan so much, is because he's such a humble Jedi. Uh, he's very relatable, he's gone through a lot of bad stuff and he doesn't always deal with it the Jedi way. He deals with it the way someone who went through a horrible trauma would deal with it. 
And so I tried to stay true to that. Which I never knew about. I never knew, nobody told me nothing. I never, I never knew. My daughter told me. She watched the last episode. She was like, Dad, did you know that you and her had a baby? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I love how neither of you knew that, and it was just like a complete surprise. Yeah, well, I said, I've got so many questions. The first of which is when. Yes! <laughs> yes! Well, no, I got that. I don't know. I was checking. No, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> children present. So, um, there was a, a break where I think, I think we say I love you or some tender something and then it, there's dusk and then there, the sunrise happens, there's a commercial break and then sunrise and I think um, uh, there's a character who comes up and interrupts our romantic moment and uh, he was like, yeah, it happened in the commercial break. <laughs> it's quick. <laughs> <laughs> this next question is for your character what would their favorite flavor of ice cream be who is the min chip of the min chip flavor of the friend group that's mine in real life so i'll go with min chip <laughs> hey lou run <laughs> This is not mine in real life, but what's the like swirly, colorful, like rainbow? That would be hers. Yeah. Blue. Something blue. Yeah, blue. Yeah. <laughs> blue ice milk, maybe. Yeah. Either May Luron or Blue Milk. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment. Check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.